In electrodynamics, circular polarization of an electromagnetic wave is a polarization state in which, at each point, the electric field of the wave has a constant magnitude but its direction rotates with time at a steady rate in a plane perpendicular to the direction of the wave. In electrodynamics the strength and direction of an electric field is defined by its electric field vector. In the case of a circularly polarized wave, as seen in the accompanying animation, the tip of the electric field vector, at a given point in space, describes a circle as time progresses. At any instant of time, the electric field vector of the wave describes a helix along the direction of propagation. A circularly polarized wave can be in one of two possible states, right circular polarization in which the electric field vector rotates in a right-hand sense with respect to the direction of propagation, and left circular polarization in which the vector rotates in a left-hand sense. Circular polarization is a limiting case of the more general condition of elliptical polarization. The other special case is the easier to understand linear polarization. The phenomenon of polarization arises as a consequence of the fact that light behaves as a two-dimensional transverse wave. Topic: <laughs> General description. On the right is an illustration of the electric field vectors of a circularly polarized electromagnetic wave. The electric field vectors have a constant magnitude, but their direction changes in a rotary manner. Given that this is a plane wave, each vector represents the magnitude and direction of the electric field for an entire plane that is perpendicular to the axis. Specifically, given that this is a circularly polarized plane wave, these vectors indicate that the electric field, from plane to plane, has a constant strength while its direction steadily rotates. Refer to these two images in the plane wave article to better appreciate this. This light is considered to be right-hand, clockwise circularly polarized if viewed by the receiver. Since this is an electromagnetic wave each electric field vector has a corresponding, but not illustrated, magnetic field vector that is at a right angle to the electric field vector and proportional in magnitude to it. As a result, the magnetic field vectors would trace out a second helix if displayed. Circular polarization is often encountered in the field of optics and in this section, the electromagnetic wave will be simply referred to as light. The nature of circular polarization and its relationship to other polarizations is often understood by thinking of the electric field as being divided into two components which are at right angles to each other. Refer to the second illustration on the right. The vertical component and its corresponding plane are illustrated in blue while the horizontal component and its corresponding plane are illustrated in green. Notice that the rightward relative to the direction of travel horizontal component leads the vertical component by one quarter of a wavelength. It is this quadrature phase relationship which creates the helix and causes the points of maximum magnitude of the vertical component to correspond with the points of zero magnitude of the horizontal component, and vice versa. The result of this alignment is that there are select vectors, corresponding to the helix, which exactly match the maxima of the vertical and horizontal components. To minimize visual clutter these are the only helix vectors displayed. To appreciate how this quadrature phase shift corresponds to an electric field that rotates while maintaining a constant magnitude, imagine a dot traveling clockwise in a circle. Consider how the vertical and horizontal displacements of the dot, relative to the center of the circle, vary sinusoidally in time and are out of phase by one quarter of a cycle. The displacements are said to be out of phase by one quarter of a cycle because the horizontal maximum displacement toward the left is reached one quarter of a cycle before the vertical maximum displacement is reached. Now referring again to the illustration, imagine the center of the circle just described, traveling along the axis from the front to the back. The circling dot will trace out a helix with the displacement toward our viewing left, leading the vertical displacement. Just as the horizontal and vertical displacements of the rotating dot are out of phase by one quarter of a cycle in time, the magnitude of the horizontal and vertical components of the electric field are out of phase by one quarter of a wavelength. The next pair of illustrations is that of left-handed, counter-clockwise circularly polarized light when viewed by the receiver. Because it is left-handed, the rightward relative to the direction of travel horizontal component is now lagging the vertical component by one quarter of a wavelength rather than leading it. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Reversal of handedness. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Via waveplate. To convert a given handedness of polarized light to the other handedness, one can use a half waveplate. A half waveplate shifts a given linear component of light one half of a wavelength relative to its orthogonal linear component. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Via reflection. The handedness of polarized light is also reversed when it is reflected off a surface at normal incidence. Upon such reflection, the rotation of the plane of polarization of the reflected light is identical to that of the incident field. However, with propagation now in the opposite direction, the same rotation direction that would be described as right-handed for the incident beam, is left-handed for propagation in the reverse direction, and vice versa. Aside from the reversal of handedness, the ellipticity of polarization is also preserved except in cases of reflection by a birefringent surface. Note that this principle only holds strictly for light reflected at normal incidence. For instance, right circularly polarized light reflected from a dielectric surface at grazing incidence an angle beyond the Brewster angle will still emerge as right-handed, but elliptically, polarized. Light reflected by a metal at non-normal incidence will generally have its ellipticity changed as well. Such situations may be solved by decomposing the incident circular or other polarization into components of linear polarization parallel and perpendicular to the plane of incidence, commonly denoted P and S respectively. The reflected components in the P and S linear polarizations are found by applying the Fresnel coefficients of reflection, which are generally different for those two linear polarizations. Only in the special case of normal incidence, where there is no distinction between P and S, are the Fresnel coefficients for the two components identical, leading to the above property. Topic: <laughs> Conversion to and from linear polarization. Circularly polarized light can be converted into linearly polarized light by passing it through a quarter wave plate. Passing linearly polarized light through a quarter wave plate with its axes at 45 degrees to its polarization axis will convert it to circular polarization. In fact, this is the most common way of producing circular polarization in practice. Note that passing linearly polarized light through a quarter wave plate at an angle other than 45 degrees will generally produce elliptical polarization. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Handedness conventions. Circular polarization may be referred to as right-handed or left-handed and clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on the direction in which the electric field vector rotates. Unfortunately, two opposing historical conventions exist. Topic: <laughs> From the point of view of the source. Using this convention, polarization is defined from the point of view of the source. When using this convention, left or right handedness is determined by pointing one's left or right thumb away from the source, in the same direction that the wave is propagating, and matching the curling of one's fingers to the direction of the temporal rotation of the field at a given point in space. When determining if the wave is clockwise or anti-clockwise circularly polarized, one again takes the point of view of the source, and while looking away from the source and in the same direction of the wave's propagation, one observes the direction of the field's spatial rotation. Using this convention, the electric field vector of a right-handed circularly polarized wave is as follows E X E Y E Z cos 2 pi lambda c t minus z sin 2 pi lambda c t minus z 0 
Display style left E underscore x, E underscore Y, E underscore Z right propto left cos frac two pi lambda left court Z right sin frac two pi lambda left court Z right zero right As a specific example, refer to the circularly polarized wave in the first animation. Using this convention that wave is defined as right-handed because when one points one's right thumb in the same direction of the wave's propagation, the fingers of that hand curl in the same direction of the field's temporal rotation. It is considered clockwise circularly polarized because from the point of view of the source, looking in the same direction of the wave's propagation, the field rotates in the clockwise direction. The second animation is that of left-handed or anti-clockwise light using this same convention. This convention is in conformity with the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers IEEE standard and as a result it is generally used in the engineering community. Quantum physicists also use this convention of handedness because it is consistent with their convention of handedness for a particle spin. Radio astronomers also use this convention in accordance with an International Astronomical Union IAU resolution made in 1973. Topic. From the point of view of the receiver In this alternative convention, polarization is defined from the point of view of the receiver. Using this convention, left or right-handedness is determined by pointing one's left or right thumb toward the source, against the direction of propagation, and then matching the curling of one's fingers to the spatial rotation of the field. When using this convention, in contrast to the other convention, the defined handedness of the wave matches the handedness of the screw type nature of the field in space. Specifically, if one freezes a right handed wave in time, when one curls the fingers of one's right hand around the helix, the thumb will point in the direction which the helix progresses given that sense of rotation. Note that it is the nature of all screws and helices that it does not matter in which direction you point your thumb when determining its handedness. When determining if the wave is clockwise or anti-clockwise circularly polarized, one again takes the point of view of the receiver and, while looking toward the source, against the direction of propagation, one observes the direction of the field's temporal rotation. Just as in the other convention, right-handedness corresponds to a clockwise rotation and left-handedness corresponds to an anti-clockwise rotation. Many optics textbooks use this second convention. It is also used by SPI. Topic. Uses of the two conventions As stated earlier, there is significant confusion with regards to these two conventions. As a general rule the engineering, quantum physics, and radio astronomy communities use the first convention where the wave is observed from the point of view of the source. In many physics textbooks dealing with optics the second convention is used where the light is observed from the point of view of the receiver to avoid confusion it is good practice to specify as defined from the point of view of the source or as defined from the point of view of the receiver when discussing polarization matters the archive of the US federal standard 1037C proposes two contradictory conventions of handedness Topic. FM radio The term, ''circular polarization'' is often used erroneously to describe mixed polarity signals used mostly in FM radio 87.5 to 108.0 MHz in the USA, where a vertical and a horizontal component are propagated simultaneously by a single or a combined array. This has the effect of producing greater penetration into buildings and difficult reception areas than a signal with just one plane of polarization. This would be an instance where the polarization would more appropriately be called random polarization because the polarization at a receiver, although constant, will vary depending on the direction from the transmitter and other factors in the transmitting antenna design. See Stokes parameters. The term FM radio Above refers to FM broadcasting, not two-way radio more properly called land mobile radio, which uses vertical polarization almost exclusively. Dichroism 
Circular dichroism CD is the differential absorption of left and right-handed circularly polarized light. Circular dichroism is the basis of a form of spectroscopy that can be used to determine the optical isomerism and secondary structure of molecules. In general, this phenomenon will be exhibited in absorption bands of any optically active molecule. As a consequence, circular dichroism is exhibited by most biological molecules, because of the dextrorotary e some sugars, and levorotary e some amino acids molecules they contain. Noteworthy as well is that a secondary structure will also impart a distinct CD to its respective molecules. Therefore, the alpha helix, beta sheet and random coil regions of proteins and the double helix of nucleic acids have CD spectral signatures representative of their structures. Also, under the right conditions, even non-chiral molecules will exhibit magnetic circular dichroism, that is, circular dichroism induced by a magnetic field. Luminescence. Circularly polarized luminescence corporal can occur when either a luminophore or an ensemble of luminophores is chiral. The extent to which emissions are polarized is quantified in the same way it is for circular dichroism, in terms of the dissymmetry factor, also sometimes referred to as the anisotropy factor. This value is given by G E M equals 2 theta L E F T minus theta R I G H T theta L E F T plus theta R I G H T display style G underscore M equals two left theta underscore mathram left theta underscore mathram right over theta underscore mathram left plus theta underscore mathram right right where theta L E F T display style theta underscore mathram left corresponds to the quantum yield of left-handed circularly polarized light and theta r i g h t display style theta underscore mathrm right to that of right-handed light the maximum absolute value of gem corresponding to purely left or right-handed circular polarization is therefore 2 Meanwhile, the smallest absolute value that GEM can achieve, corresponding to linearly polarized or unpolarized light, is zero. Mathematical description The classical sinusoidal plane wave solution of the electromagnetic wave equation for the electric and magnetic fields is E R T equals E R E Q Psi EXP I K Z minus Omega T B R T equals Z carrot times E R T display style begin aligned math B F E math B F R T and equals left math B F E right math from re left math B F Q left psi right wrangle E X P left I left K Z omega T right 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 math B F B math B F R T and equals hat math B F Z times math B F E math B F R T end aligned where K is the wave number omega equals C K display style Style omega equals c k is the angular frequency of the wave. Q equals x caret y caret display style math b f q equals left hat math b f x hat math b f y right is an orthogonal two times two display style two times two matrix whose columns span the transverse x y plane and c display style c is the speed of light. 
here e display style left math bf e right is the amplitude of the field and psi equals d e f psi x psi y equals cos theta exp i alpha x sin theta exp i alpha y dispel a style psi wrangle stack mathrum def equals begin p matrix psi underscore x psi underscore y end p matrix equals begin p matrix cos theta exp left i alpha underscore x right sin theta exp left i alpha underscore y right end p matrix is the normalized Jones vector in the xy plane if alpha y Display style alpha underscore y is rotated by pi two. Display style pi two radians with respect to alpha x. Display style alpha underscore x and the x amplitude equals the y amplitude. The wave is circularly polarized. The Jones vector is psi equals one two one plus or minus I EXP I alpha X Display style, psi wrangle equals one over SQRT two begin P matrix one PMI end P matrix EXP left I alpha underscore X right where the plus sign indicates left circular polarization and the minus sign indicates right circular polarization. In the case of circular polarization, the electric field vector of constant magnitude rotates in the xy plane. If basis vectors are defined such that R equals D E F 1 2 1 Minus I display style R wrangle stackra mathrum def equals one over sqrt two begin p matrix one I end p matrix and L equals D E F one two one I Display style L wrangle stackra mathrum def equals one over SQRT two begin P matrix one I end P matrix. Then the polarization state can be written in the RL basis as psi equals psi R R plus psi L L Display style psi wrangle equals psi underscore r r wrangle plus psi underscore l l wrangle, where psi r equals d e f one two cos theta plus i sin theta exp Delta EXP I Alpha X Psi L equals D E F one two cos theta minus I sin theta EXP I delta EXP I alpha X display style begin aligned psi underscore R tilde and stacra mathrum def equals tilde frac one SQRT two left cos theta plus I sin theta EXP left I delta right right EXP left I alpha underscore X right psi underscore L tilde and stacra mathrum def equals tilde frac one SQRT T two left cos theta i sin theta exp left i delta right right exp left i alpha underscore x right end aligned and delta equals alpha y minus alpha 
x display style delta equals alpha underscore y alpha underscore x topic antennas A number of different types of antenna elements can be used to produce circularly polarized or nearly so radiation. Following Balani's, one can use dipole elements. Two crossed dipoles provide the two orthogonal field components. If the two dipoles are identical, the field intensity of each along zenith would be of the same intensity. Also, if the two dipoles were fed with a 90 degrees degree time phase difference phase quadrature, the polarization along zenith would be circular. One way to obtain the 90 degrees time phase difference between the two orthogonal field components, radiated respectively by the two dipoles, is by feeding one of the two dipoles with a transmission line which is one quarter wavelength longer or shorter than that of the other. P.80 or helical elements to achieve circular polarization in axial or end fire mode the circumference c of the helix must be with c wavelength topic <laughs> 1 near optimum and the spacing about s wavelength 4 p.571 or patch elements. Circular and elliptical polarizations can be obtained using various feed arrangements or slight modifications made to the elements. Circular polarization can be obtained if two orthogonal modes are excited with a 90 degrees time phase difference between them. This can be accomplished by adjusting the physical dimensions of the patch. For a square patch element, the easiest way to excite ideally circular polarization is to feed the element at two adjacent edges. The quadrature phase difference is obtained by feeding the element with a 90 degrees power divider. P.859 In quantum mechanics In the quantum mechanical view, light is composed of photons. Polarization is a manifestation of the intrinsic angular momentum the spin of the photon. More specifically, in quantum mechanics the direction of spin of a photon is tied to the handedness of the circularly polarized light and the spin of a beam of photons is similar to the spin of a beam of particles, such as electrons. In nature. Only a few mechanisms in nature are known to systematically produce circularly polarized light. In 1911, Albert Abraham Michelson discovered that light reflected from the golden scarab beetle Chrysina resplendens is preferentially left polarized. Since then, circular polarization has been measured in several other scarab beetles like Chrysina gloriosa, as well as some crustaceans such as the mantis shrimp. In these cases, the underlying mechanism is the molecular level helicity of the chitinous cuticle. The bioluminescence of the larvae of fireflies is also circularly polarized, as reported in 1980 for the species Photuris lucicrescens and Photuris versicolor. For fireflies, it is more difficult to find a microscopic explanation for the polarization, because the left and right lanterns of the larvae were found to emit polarized light of opposite sensors. The authors suggest that the light begins with a linear polarization due to inhomogeneities inside aligned photocytes, and it picks up circular polarization while passing through linearly birefringent tissue. Water air interfaces provide another source of circular polarization. Sunlight that gets scattered back up towards the surface is linearly polarized. If this light is then totally internally reflected back down, its vertical component undergoes a phase shift. To an underwater observer looking up, the faint light outside Snell's window therefore is partially circularly polarized. Weaker sources of circular polarization in nature include multiple scattering by linear polarizers, as in the circular polarization of starlight, and selective absorption by circularly dichroic media. Two species of mantis shrimp have been reported to be able to detect circular polarized light.
Topic See also Polarizer 3D film Chirality Photon polarization Sinusoidal plane wave solutions of the electromagnetic wave equation Starlight polarization Waveplate <laughs>